hi everyone, my name is Philo and today I'm going to be telling you about how it's all in the numbers. So imagine you're in a hypothetical city. So let's say uh, someone tells you that 90% of the cars in the city are blue and that only 10% of the cars in the city are red. You're also told that there was a hit and run and you didn't see who the culprit was. However, one witness did see who the culprit was. You're told that this witness has an 80% reliability factor, so they're wrong 20% of the time. And they say that they saw that the car that left was red. Now, who do you think did it? Well, it turns out that when most participants are asked about this uh, sort of scenario, they say that they agree with the witness. It was probably a red car. After all, the witness is correct 80% of the time. However, in reality, there's only about a 30% chance that it was the red car, and it was way more likely that it was the blue car that committed the hit and run. So why is that? Why do we think that? It's because we're ne neglecting the base rates. Base rates are all around us, whether it be the number of lightning strikes annually that we get, to the number of professors to students in every lecture hall or online lecture hall, to the prevalence of certain diseases. Ignoring these base rates can have devastating consequences, especially in a critical area such as healthcare. For example, in the current pandemic, a doctor who neglects base rates can often make more misdiagnoses. A doctor that misdiagnoses a patient with COVID-19, even though they don't really have it, can cause them to take up a bed or an ICU unit, even though they don't actually need it. However, if they say that a patient doesn't have COVID-19, even though they really did, it could cause them to be more lax with their social distancing or mask wearing protocols. Now let's look at an example of the base rate. Let's look at the base rate of COVID-19 infection. According to the World Health Organization, there are just over 42 million confirmed cases as of last week. And in the world, there are about 7.8 billion people. To get a simple base rate, we can divide the confirmed cases by the number of people in the world, and we get a base rate of 0.53%. And it's generally presented in this sort of format as a statistic. So ideally, doctors need to use base rates, as we have just seen, alongside evidence to make a diagnosis. So let's take a hypothetical example of our friend here, Dr. Bob. So Dr. Bob, as we said, should use evidence, which would be a symptom presentation or lab results, alongside the base rates, in other words, prior probability. And this sort of calculation uh, is known as Bayesian statistics or Bayes theorem because he thought of the idea of putting in prior probabilities and this would be correct. However, because we're not in an ideal world, Dr. Bob often weighs the evidence much more heavily. He weighs symptom presentation and the lab results way more than he weighs the base rate uh, of COVID-19. So this isn't ideal, but why would Dr. Bob do something like that? It could be because uh, maybe a colleague of his was really talking about all the evidence he saw and all the symptom presentation of COVID-19, which would cause that sort of thing to be more available to him, so he weighed the evidence much higher. So let's look at the two things, evidence versus base rates individually. Uh, you do need to take into account evidence, but the reliability of that evidence also needs to be accounted for. It's not always 100%. The test can be wrong sometimes, causing uh, false positives or false negatives. You're also not always 100% accurate when you're looking at symptoms uh, and you, you need to assess your judgment of that. Now look at this screen. Can you make any sense of it? It's just a bunch of numbers that don't really mean anything to you, right? It's gonna be hard to remember anything. Well, this is the sort of thing that doctors deal with when they deal with base rates. They're just kind of presented with a bunch of statistics and numbers and it's gonna be hard to remember. Do you even remember the base rate of COVID-19 infection that I gave you a few slides ago? Chances are you probably don't remember the exact number. And it's because when base rates are presented as statistics, we tend to ignore them. In one study, uh, doctors were presented with the base rate of coronary heart disease in both men and women. And it turns out that coronary heart disease is much more common in men. However, they didn't use this fact when they were diagnosing patients later on. They diagnosed males and females equally, uh, which was not ideal because they should be diagnosing men much more often. But it's because the base rates were presented as statistics. Now what can we do to help them? Uh, Experience-based training is one possibility. So doc doctors that have more experience tend to get more incoming patients and, and uh, they end up getting a sense of that base rate without seeing it as a number. 
they eventually find out who really had the disease and who didn't have the disease. And this way they can have the experience of the base rate and experiencing the base rate causes them to use it more often. In the same way, medical schools could possibly apply this. They could increase the number of case studies for students for more common diseases and have less case studies for the more rare diseases. This sort of thing can apply to us too, who aren't in healthcare. Take a look at that hypothetical example from before with the cars. Now imagine you were in the city, driving around the city in your own car. You would see that there are so many blue cars and, quite a, and much less red cars. So this way, you would probably use that base rate more uh, in your judgment as to who was the culprit for the murder mystery. So think about that the next time uh, you're asked about this type of question. So yeah, thank you. That's my presentation.